Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On today's video, I am making pulled pork sliders and I'm going to be cooking on the PK grill. Let's get going. And here's what we're going to be cooking today. Boston butt, pork shoulder. And this one weighs just a little over six pounds, so it's not a real big shoulder. I did some real light trimming on it, just got rid of some of the excess fat and some of the loose hanging pieces of meat. We are going to season this with a commercial rub. Basically, I'm clearing out the pantry and it's a good opportunity to use some of it. It's a good rub anyway. What I'm going to be applying first is kind of like a binder and very commonly people will use yellow mustard. I use yellow mustard a lot. The other day I made brats, beer brats, and I love sweet hot mustard. I've never applied sweet hot mustard to pulled pork, you know, to a Boston butt or to ribs or anything. So I thought, perfect opportunity. This is my favorite brand, Beaver brand for what it's worth. It's good stuff. So I'm gonna apply this. And not real, real heavy. And right away I can feel, you know, there's a thicker, consistency than you get with the regular yellow mustard. And again, just a really, I mean, real thin layer. I don't want this to impede the smoke penetrating at all here. All right, now we are going to apply the rub. I'm using OBQ, I love this stuff. This is not a sponsored video, it's just, it's a good commercial rub. And I'm going to go with two of their rubs. First one's going to be the sweet rub. One of the things I like about this is what I'm guessing is allspice. There's just a very unique flavor that is very pronounced that comes out of this. Right, so the next layer will be the OBQ's, the sweet heat. This stuff's really good. <laughs> Add again, just another dimension of flavor here. Right, looking good. I've got the PK grill heated up in the backyard. I'm gonna allow this to kind of sweat through the rub here a little bit. I'll meet you outside. I have the PK preheated now. It's running at 275. And I've noticed that's where this grill is the most stable. The food's going to be on this side. I have the damper on the top about halfway open. I have the charcoal on this side underneath. The damper is about halfway open. Damper on top is fully closed. Damper on the bottom under the food is fully closed. So we're gonna get a nice convection. And when I'm using the PK, I like to go fat cap down. Again, it's just that convection seems to be bringing the heat from the bottom. I have a drip pan. I'm just gonna throw down a little bit of hickory. And we are cooking. After about two hours or so, I'm gonna check to see what kind of bark we're developing, check the color, and probably give it a spritz. I'm gonna be spraying this with apple cider and a little bit, just a splash of apple cider vinegar in the spray bottle. See you in a bit. Okay, it's been two hours now and I have not looked at this shoulder since you guys last saw me put it on the cooker. I can tell you it smells amazing. I wanna take a quick moment to talk about something that occurred and it occurs with every cook, but I've never really talked about it before. I've had questions about it, however. My cooker is running at 275, running nice and stable. Same thing would happen on my gator pit, by the way, if I was running this cooker, have it all preheated. You put this big piece of cold meat in here, even if the meat's room temperature, it's much colder than the interior of your cooker. You close the lid, it's going to naturally bring down the interior temperature of your cooker. Now the heat source is struggling to bring, to kind of stabilize the heat. So what tends to happen with some people is they start messing around the dampers, opening up everything, closing everything to adjust because of the heat surpasses their target temp. So you end up with spikes up and down, up and down. The best thing to do is just resist the urge to make major adjustments. If you feel the urge to just a little tiny adjustment, that's fine. But you want the temperature to gradually go up to your target temp. The worst thing you can do is start opening up dampers and then panicking because now you're way past your target temp and it takes a lot longer for most cookers to come down than to go up. So just kind of have a beer, relax, it'll be okay. So what I'm gonna do now is give this a spritz with the, uh, again, that apple juice and cider mixture. And you can see it's a perfect time. It's drying out here and it's starting to develop a nice little bark. 
And again, this is, um, let me get primed up here, apple cider and apple cider vinegar. And I just want to make sure I coat the entire shoulder here, the entire butt. There we go. It's burning very efficiently. I still have that chunk of wood is going and I still have a lot of lumps. So I've got a few more hours left before I have to add anything. So what I'm going to do now is just let this do what it's doing. And I'll probably check in another 30 minutes or so to see if I need to give it another spritz. See you in a bit. Okay, we just hit the five hour mark as far as the cooking time is concerned. Again, every 30, 40 minutes, I just gave it a quick spritz of that apple juice and vinegar mixture. At the three hour mark, I inserted a temperature probe into the meat itself. And we are currently at 163 degrees internal on the meat. And like I said, I didn't touch any of the dampers. Started out at, at uh, 275 degrees, put that meat in it, brought it down to 250. I rode 250, 255 for a long time, which is cool for me because that's my happy zone as far as cooking. I like cooking at 250. The highest it went, and that's where it is right now, is at uh, 260 degrees. We are now going to wrap this meat. It's got a gorgeous color to it. I apologize for this sun. This time of year, that sun just comes in really at a hot, steep angle here. I live on a hill and I fight with that sun at this time of day. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm really adding any liquid is kind of a personal preference. I kind of like to do it. And this is what I like to use, this uh, Stubbs pork marinade. Again, no sponsorship here. It's just something that I like and I buy it. I'm not gonna run a whole lot, just kind of a little line down the top here. It's really all we need. Want to make sure you keep it nice and tight. And I like to wrap shoulders with two sheets of foil. And back on the cooker it goes. When I'm using the PK, I'll shoot the thermometers for the grate as well as the meat through the upper damper here. All right, we are cooking again. I'm just going to continue monitoring the internal temperature of this meat. And once it hits about 195, I'll be pulling it. All right, eight hours in, I finally hit that 195 and I'm ready to pull this pork from the pit. So what I'm going to do now is just take this inside, let it rest a little bit, let all the juices redistribute into the uh, meat, and uh, we'll get it all pulled up so you can see it and make some sliders. See you inside. All right, so here's the shoulder, and it's all rested now. Now, normally I would be pulling this pork in a foil tray, but when I was setting up everything, I discovered that it was obstructing the camera view, so I had to pull out the fancy pork pulling plate. First, we'll go ahead and pull out that bone. Actually, it pulled itself out. This is what's referred to as the instant read thermometer built in. Works every time. Oh yeah, very, very tender. All right, so here's the finished pulled pork. Now let's make some sliders. And you can see, I mean, if you're cooking for like a Super Bowl or something, this would go a long way, a long way for not a lot of money. This shoulder, I paid a little over 12 bucks for it. Like I said it was just over six pounds and making sliders, even regular pulled pork sandwiches, that's a lot of meat. Next thing I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of barbecue sauce. This is spicy barbecue sauce. Look at the size of these pickles. I, these are Vlasic of all brands. I guess that's a good pickle. Got these at the store. These things are huge.
Now some coleslaw. There you go, pulled pork sliders. Let's give one of these guys a try. Mm. First off, that PK rocked this cook. It, totally low maintenance cook throughout this entire eight hours. No problems at all, no issues. Pork turned out great, very moist, very tender. Just the right amount of smokiness. I mean, really, really good. That addition of that pickle gives a tang, and that coleslaw, I just I'm a big fan of coleslaw on a pork slider. Really good, very, very happy. Anyway, guys, so my last video, a couple of people asked if I would start, because they always see me drinking a beer at the end, mentioning the beer, I guess. So this is another San Diego beer. I just, I like to support the local breweries, and we have some good ones here. This is Stone. This is the citrusy wet, and I selected this just because I thought it would go really well with pork, and also that Stubbs marinade I used has a little bit of citrus in it. And if anyone's familiar with Stone, their IPAs are definitely not for the faint at heart. I mean, they've, they'll punch you right in the face. Good stuff, but I wanted something a little bit more kind of crisp, I guess, and refreshing, and that's why I went with this. Anyway, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.